Hey, welcome to my devlog. I'm Dustin, and I'm making a 3D stealth action game from scratch. I'm also working on an action game about shifting between different realities, but this devlog is about espionage. In this devlog, I'll cover the following topics. For art, I created a reusable character rig, animated a bunch of actions for the rig, modeled a generic soldier using the reusable rig, and modeled a large detailed test level. For coding, I added a navigation mesh parser to the asset compiler, coded pathfinding for the nav mesh, and coded a goal-oriented artificial intelligence system with a few actions and goals. And for gameplay, I began experimenting with a first-person mode. Alright, so let's dive into the details, starting with the new rig. So this is the new soldier model and the new reusable rig. I'm not going to explain how to make rigs or even how they work. There's plenty of that content out there already. But I do want to cover a little bit about why I had to make a new rig in the first place, because no one seems to cover this in their Blender tutorials. I come from Autodesk Maya, but I can't afford to pay for Maya, so I've been using Blender, and I'm thankful it's available to me. For context, in Maya, everything in a scene is a node. Every joint, particle system, light, etc. They are all the same nodes, and any actions that apply to any node work the same. So constraints, for example, are the same for everything you see in your scene. In Blender, some things are completely separated concepts. Armatures are one of these things. An armature is a scene node, but everything in the armature is a unique child object of the armature. Joints, for example, are not scene nodes, they are children of the armature object. This leads to problems when using transformations and constraints, since the armature is managing its joints and not the scene. I attempted to do things the way I always have in Maya, so I put my rig controls in the scene separated from the armature. I do this so I can easily hide them and export the character more easily. But all of my controls and constraints constantly broke, didn't bake correctly, or didn't export as expected. I couldn't do basic things like rotate the character 180 degrees. This is why when you watch Blender rigging tutorials, you'll see people always use an armature joint for their controls and IK targets. They do this because armatures are separated concepts from the scene. Another problem is animation. Since armature joints are not part of the scene, you can't store their animations in the scene either. All animations must be children of the armature itself. Blender treats armature animations differently from scene animations. So having your controls outside of the armature means they can't share animations with anything in the armature. This will lead you to make a new Blender file for every animation you want, which means if you change the rig ever, You'll have to change it in every single file, and it becomes a huge mess and it's impossible to manage. So when you see people add a joint as a control and you think that's stupid, now you'll also know why it's stupid. Now that I have the rig set up to account for Blender's weirdness, I can store multiple animations in a single file, and everything is much easier to maintain. The upgraded rig also gives me a lot more control. Because of the first person mode, which we'll talk about in a little bit, I can no longer guarantee how far away from the camera everything will be, so we need a little bit more detail for when the camera is closer to the characters. This rig will be used for all humanoid characters, including the player character. This way I can spend more time on unique and situational animations rather than making a new run or walk for every character. Next up, I made a new test room. The tiny little room I've been using to test gameplay wasn't cutting it anymore. So I invested time into creating a fully usable area. The area is loosely based on the dock from MGS1, but I've expanded it to include more gameplay opportunities like ventilation for hiding, tight spaces to sneak through where guards can't follow, railings to hang off, and doors to test keycards. I've also fleshed out the collision attributes, as discussed in the previous devlog. Each color on the mesh represents a different type of surface. Red is a wall, green is stairs, blue is a railing, and so on. I also created a navigation mesh by hand. For the nav mesh, I originally tried to generate it. 
I took the collision geometry and eliminated anything that couldn't be walked on. Then I attached colliders to each node and ran it through the collision system to push the nodes away from seams like against walls. The results were okay in some places and completely unusable in others, along with many islands of nodes which would cause all sorts of gameplay problems later. I could have kept going and fixed all the issues and it probably would have been okay-ish, but I realized quickly that the navigation mesh is actually an art asset. Modeling it by hand will give me much more control to create believable movement and it's not exactly a difficult asset to make. So after modeling it by hand, the resulting path is simpler and there are no stray islands. The magenta lines represent the pathfinding nodes after the mesh was processed. It's still a little wasteful and I may create an optimization algorithm to collapse the nearby nodes that fully share paths, but for now it's good enough. For this devlogs workout, I visited my local squash court. I'm not allowed to play with anyone else, but I got a good workout in anyway. If you haven't subscribed yet, now is a great time to click that button. And if you'd like to hang out and chat with me, I opened a Discord server. Only a couple guys in there so far. There's no bots or ranking systems, just a place to talk about game dev and fitness. Link in the description. Alright, let's check out the game so far. I added a few pathfinding functions to the nav mesh, including an A star implementation. Now that I can generate paths, I can finally start making some intelligence. What you're seeing is the result of the AI I've implemented so far. I researched many approaches to creating AI. I considered machine learning and some older methods too. But I settled on the idea of goal-oriented action planning. Like entity component system, Scope is just an idea. Some programmers create enormous lists of rules for how you should be required to code things in order to have their blessing to use an acronym, but ultimately it's just an idea and you can implement it however you wish. Gope works on the idea of creating small actions which are chained together to form a task. Many tasks can be created to solve the same problem, and a goal is used to determine which task can be completed as well as which task makes the most sense at any time. Once you find a task that can be completed, you begin running the task's actions in order until the task is finished or fails. For example, one of my test goals is called Random Patrol. Random Patrol has several actions. First, it asks the nav mesh for a path from the current location to a random location. It then moves through the world until it reaches that destination and finally stands still for a few seconds. If at any point a path cannot be determined, the goal fails and a new goal runs which finds a new random location. If the Random Patrol goal fails to find any path, then the next best goal will be tried. For now, I have a goal called Do Nothing, which has a single action that plays the idle animation and always succeeds. So if the AI breaks, the soldier will simply stand still. Once implemented, Gope is easy to maintain and extremely scalable. It can be used for anything that needs intelligence, not just guards or bosses. For example, I'll be using it for doors and cameras, which could need complex behaviors for different situations, like alert phases. Before I start adding behaviors to the guards, I'll probably outline combat. And to do that, I need to implement weapons and items. And to do that, I need to finalize the larger gameplay elements. Originally, I planned to stop at MGS1 style gameplay. Everything would be top down and camera manipulation would be your primary way to view the environment. But I recently went back and played MGS1 and it kind of sucked. The game is still extremely beautiful, and in general it's fun, but compared to MGS2 gameplay, it just didn't hold my attention anymore. So I've decided to implement first person aiming to make the game more modern and more fun. 
I screwed around with many types of aiming, and I settled on a full first-person shooter mode. My reasoning is simple. When I play a shooter, I often use strafing as a way to help with aiming, especially when using a controller. In Metal Gear Solid 2, you can only aim your gun, not move, which led to tedious amounts of time aiming instead of actually shooting. After implementing strafing, I decided being able to sneak forward to look around corners would also be helpful, and at that point I just gave the player full control, and it became fun almost immediately. Movement speed is slower, and you can't crawl into vents or cover against walls in first person mode. I don't want the game to be completely playable in first person, but I don't want restrictions on shooting either. MGS games have always punished pretty heavily for being caught. I'm gonna try and take the Doom approach by rewarding heavily for being stealthy instead, and having no major penalties for being caught. To that end, I'm thinking of turning alert phases into a full shooter minigame that will help replenish your gear and make it easier to sneak again later. We'll see how it goes. There's something to be said about the heart-stopping disappointment when you get seen in MGS1. Even playing it today, I completely lose it for a few seconds and don't know what to do. I'd like to somehow keep that feeling of dread without it being so devastating. It'll take some experimenting for sure. If you enjoyed this devlog, let me know in the comments below. Hearing from you guys always puts me in a good mood. But that's it for this devlog. Thank you very much for watching, stay motivated, kill your lifts, and I'll see you in the next one.